Rice and Baines, season two. Let's go. Aye, aye. But we are back. Season two, episode one, 737 of Breaking Bad. Uh, my name is Adam, and I'm joined, as always, uh, with Terry. And we are here to break down some Breaking Bad. Break down a Breaking Bad. There it Yay. is. There it is. We are back. Yay. We have Yay. that one, too. We have that one, too. Uh, we are back. I am... yeah, a lot of people do, man. It's a great look. It's a great look. Uh, <laughs> well, season two, very excited to dive into uncharted territory. I'm really, uh, really looking forward to talking about this episode because there was some really crazy things, some paranoia at stakes here. And some awesome Tuco moments. So, uh, Terry, welcome back to breaking, uh, breaking down the Breaking Badness. How are you doing? Season two is off and running, and it goes bonkers right off the top. It it's the oh. Todd. Todd and I said that we think season two is going to be your favorite season, and it's it it, it just might be. It just might be. I, I forget how quickly everything just takes off in this season. So you said something. What was my take on the first 30 seconds with that pink dog? (laughs) There was some pool party that went awry. Um, Maybe it's Tuco's gift. No, I I have no idea what's going on with that pool and that floating (laughs) eye. I kind of dig it, though. It's 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 going to be interesting. I thought for a second that was Chevy Chase's pool and fit. uh, Christmas vacation, uh, but then you no, know, I was like, no, this is a better looking pool. So, uh, really excited to see where what actually happens with that dog and why is his eyeball floating and why is half of his body burnt? That's another question that we can all be asking. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea where we're going, where we're headed I, with that. But that's I exciting. love, I love that now we we actually have episodes. You 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 even claim you haven't seen because I'm still questioning the second half of the first season. But uh, the, these you actually <laughs> you you actually yeah. haven't seen these, and now you're going in completely blind. And this is what's going to make the rest of this sideshow so much fun. Yeah. So this this is a couple things. I only th- like I've, I've said this before. Like the only thing I really know was the Sean Carlo Esposito shows up at some point, but we I forgot about Saul. That's the other one that shows up at some point too. I'm imagining, right? That, that would be a good assumption. Okay, well, good. So at least I know two characters that are on their way. When they're going to get here, no idea. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about episode two, or episode one of season two, called 737. Some great maths by Walter White, by the way. Some yes. great maths. Let's do it. Let's do let's it. Here's our it. summary. Season two, episode one, 737. <laughs> season two picks up right where season one left off. Drug deal in the junkyard. Tuco thinks the blue stuff is tight, tight, tight. Then he freaks out on no doze, who is beaten till he truly does doze. In fact, while Walt does some math on how much money he needs to leave behind to set up his family for life, we find out no doze has taken the ultimate doze, and Tuco beat him to death. Tuco's other muscle, Gonzo, hides the body in the junkyard. Now, Walt and Jesse have seen Tuco kill a man, and they begin to worry they might be next on the Tuco hit list. Jesse buys a gun, while Walt turns some beans into a poison named ricin. The panic reaches new heights when Hank offhandedly informs Walt and Jesse that Gonzo is also dead. Walt and Jesse think he killed Nodos, he killed Gonzo, maybe Tuco really is coming for them next. Hank discovers Gonzo's death was actually accidental. His arm got pinned, moving no doses body, and he bled out. Hey, call Jay Leno, world's dumbest criminals. Hank is also investigating Walt and Jesse's heist of the methylamine. (laughs) uh, Understanding this means they have changed their formula and know their chemistry, but don't really know the streets. In his spare time, Hank is also investigating why Skylar isn't calling Marie back. (laughs) Skyler tells him about the shoplifted tiara, to which Hank admits he knows, and Marie is in therapy for it. 
Skylar is feeling pretty neglected, not only from her sister, but from her moody teenage son and her cancerous husband who is never home. And when he is, he is getting frisky when she is not into it. Walt <laughs> finally comes home to a relaxed Skylar in the tub. Walt, after hiding the money and the gun in the nursery, feels ready to explain everything to Skylar. Then he sees a car pull up outside. He goes to investigate. It's Jesse being held at gunpoint by Tuco. Tuco says, get in and drive. So Walt gets in and they drive away. Adam. So <laughs> this, is where, this is where I talk about what I feel about the episode. Uh, the closing line of get in and drive it reminded me of the popular Rihanna song, uh, Shut Up and Drive. So I thought that was... Uh, I would have liked to see an overlay of that, him <laughs> leaving. Uh, but this is a, was a really awesome episode. I liked how you guys made a passing comment on our season finale recap uh, that this is kind of what a true finale really feels like. And I can totally mm -hmm. feel that. This is definitely what the true finale of season one is. And the first, that other episode was like a preview. You know, just maybe like a little extended part of it. Uh Definitely feels like it would end, like to tell a season would end, or it like it could be like a final, like couple final, like near the end of the season or ending or a, a season series fin or season finale. So it feels right to end it right where it does with them driving down the road with Tuco. Uh, I think Tuco is so fascinating because he is unhinged. <laughs> He, you don't know if he's completely high or he's, uh, he's totally unpredictable. So that's what the beauty of my uh, prediction of that he's going to die mid season. I don't know how accurate that is, just because he's so unpredictable. I kind of would like to see him live the whole the whole show, maybe because if especially if uh, you know if he, he's as entertaining as he is here, I think some of the paranoia that Walt and Jesse do have with the Tuco character is fascinating. Uh, the Skyler stuff is it works really well here. Um, I think this is probably her best episode to date for me. I'm not a huge Skyler fan, but that one scene with Hank um, and herself, that was probably one of the better scenes that she's been in. Uh, and she's been in some pretty good ones. But uh, I'm, this is a really good way to start the season, especially gets you excited to get back in this world. And uh, yeah, it's 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 going to be a fun conversation. What's funny is you you're like, oh, this is how a season finale is supposed to feel, not the last one. This wasn't even the episode I was thinking was was ah. the potential season finale because this feeling of holy crap, what's happening? What's going on? Yeah, that kind of is the feeling after every episode kind of for the rest of the show. Oh, so love, okay, I'm already excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like this is a, uh, it, it just, the web just keeps getting more and more complicated with every passing episode. And this is the start of it, right? You, you get season one, you, you get this, this vibe of, you know, kind of, I think I may have said Wrong this time, on, the, yeah. on the last one. It, it's kind of this this quirky, you know, guys trying to figure out how to be criminals, trying to figure out how to break mm. bad. And now, it, like, it kind of feels like the beginning of Barry when we did our Barry deep dive of, you know, it's this quirky, almost comedy at times about this dark subject. But eventually, because it's a dark subject, it's got to get dark and it's mm. got to start to get twisted and it's got to start to get complicated. And this is where that starts. And you see this, you know, we talked, there's kind of this downward spiral that's starting with Walt. And now they're starting to see what the ramifications of their actions are, especially, I mean, the, the beginning of the episode, he sits down and quick does some math in his head. $737,000. That's what I need. What was it like 11 more drug deals, 12 more drug deals. And then I'm done. I'm out. I'm, but at what cost, right? At how, what is it going to cost him? By the end of the episode, he's realizing, oh, you know, I'm dealing with complete degenerates here that are completely unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And who knows where I'm, this is going to lead me. And I think that having the quick maths at the beginning of it, 12 drug deals, 
it really shows that he is totally at this point a small time criminal small very small time right and uh i think as obviously we're going to see this i don't think that he's going to stay that way for much longer he's going to realize that he's playing uh he's playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers at this point you know he, he has to kind of evolve to that upper the next level he has to go through the progressions he has to go to single a double a triple and go up to so he's get on the level of everybody else those, and, those are some hank level metaphors you're pulling out there <laughs> I, I, I practiced. I, I, I did. That's the one thing I researched. How can I be like Hank? That was my uh, midlife crisis moment. I think the shades and the cool swimsuit. <laughs> uh. But they, they work though. They do work in this situation. They work. They work. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, man, it's 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 really cool to see the kind of going to going to be cool to see the progression of the character. I think even Jesse is definitely matured from episode one to now. He's completely. Uh, you know, a stronger character. He's not as, you know, complaining as much. He still has his, he brings up his issues, of course, and he, he doesn't have all the right plans and our ideas, but he does, it comes across a lot stronger than he did from the first episode. There's always that already that character growth there. He's realizing he's in survival mode at this point. Mm -hmm. And he, he is very good at surviving. He's mm -hmm. very good at knowing what he needs to do to just get, get through something that's when his street smarts come out and uh that's why he he starts to show up on, on an episode like this mm -hmm. um let's get into some of the stuff we talk about best scene is the first thing and i'm gonna go first because it's already been mentioned the scene i have down for my best scene and that is the showdown between skylar and hank yeah um, i love that scene and what i love about it is this episode the first season really kind of developed one dimensional characters in both of these, in both Skylar and Hank. Uh, they, they didn't really have much going on. And this one scene kind of rounds out both of them in a very unique way where you're getting Skylar is starting to realize what her life has become. And you're starting to see her fight back a little bit. At the same time, you see Hank and all that, you know, tough exterior that those wisecracks, all of that is just a veneer. It's just um, a shield to protect what's really on the inside. And it takes Skylar freaking out on him for it to finally start to come out. When he mentions the shoplifting and that reaction of, yeah, if I knew you were going to take it back, uh, we're working on it. It's a process. And <laughs> it's like that, like that's the first time you see Hank get real in a way like that. Mm -hmm. And then it ends with her freaking out and Hank trying to hug her, <laughs> but not really knowing how. And all I can say is I can look at that water heater for you. I, it, it's like, this is, it's a good I, I am a practical man who can help in practical ways. <laughs> and this is how this is the practical way I can help. He can eat your cheese. He can he can fix the water heater. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He can make bad bad metaphors, bad Shania Twain jokes, but he he's he can come through in a pinch when he needs to. So yeah. I, I love I love this scene. And I think you also get some more back more of Maria and Hank from that one scene at the house too by their car because i don't think we i don't correct mm. me if i'm wrong i don't recall if we actually saw their house in the first season i don't i don't think, think we so. did either so we actually got a personal moment between them that was involving the whites so and and a true picture of just how much damn purple Marie has collected <laughs> yeah that's a good point i actually didn't pay attention to that as much but when you say that, I, I do recall there was some the, purple, the but I didn't put two cup, and two. The, the yeah. appliances, the, I mean, it, it's everything. Hank had no design choice in that kitchen or, no, <laughs> or anything. No. Uh, well, that was a scene. That scene was definitely one of mine as well. Uh, but I, I'm, if I'm going to something different, I got to go with the final. Well, not the let's go to the ending scene here. Well, we'll do this. So 
I feel bad for Skyler because she once again just said, I'm here by myself, you know, and she turns around. And he's he leaves her in the bathtub and he has to get and leave speechless. He doesn't say a word. He just walks yeah, out. He just leaves. He's like stoic this entire time. Or, you know, he has this little <gasps> his facial expressions of like, what's the hell's happening? And then uh, I think he's upset that it's Jesse. But Jess, Jess, Jesse's petrified because, yeah, the, the oldest trick in the book that's hiding in the back seat of a car. And it, it's one of the worst cars ever. It's so crinkly and a metal grinding and stuff like that. It, it plays really well. And uh, it makes me wonder what's going to happen next. And I think that's what every great ending should do of a show is want you coming back for the next and see if, how they get out of the situation because Tuco is unhinged and he looks like he is meaning some business there. So it's very interesting to see what happens. Well, and, and the great thing about that too, is it's a scene, the scene that wasn't, Right. It's a scene you it's like there's about to be this moment between Walt and Skyler that is completely derailed. Like you you get that opportunity. Walt has that moment where he's like, I've got to tell you, I'm going to tell you everything. And it just backfires and he can't end up not being able to say anything and just walks out. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a scene that wasn't as well. I mean, that, that scene. Yeah, it's great. It's Good great. point. The Ken wins douchebag award. Marie <laughs> running uh -huh. over that kid's car again. <laughs> uh huh. Man, she. If it's not Ken win, it's the Marie D bag award. I don't know. Yeah, I, I put her down a couple times. Um, but yeah, for this episode, I think that would be definitely one of them that you have to say because they when they had that shot come out, at, at first I thought that kid was a D bag for there's all that cul-de-sac to play it and you have to go hit their car and he almost hit them and stuff. So I'm like, it's almost it like it was a new car. He might have not known what he was doing yet. I don't believe that. <laughs> 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 Todd would agree with me. He's yeah. He then was, then, he then you're saying the kid is the douchebag. I would have. And then they showed that shot and the, where the car placement was. And he was just kind of staring off. I'm like, that car's getting run over. I was like, "Up, oh, scratch that person off, and I'm gonna put Marie down here." And the look on the kid's face, the look of just sheer horror and deep devastation. He'll be fine. Was... I think Hank gave him like a hundo. I think that's I think what so. <laughs> yeah. He'll be just fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had Marie down too. I mean, mm. it's it's kind of an obvious one at this point. Um. For at least for this episode, yeah, she's very clutch. She's she's she, the tea bag or the MVP of the episode. That's her two options right now. Yeah, uh, my uh, let's go pink man stick man award is uh, avocado masks. Oh, uh, that's that's I'm, yeah. I mean, because something that tur that had that turned something on for for Walt. I'm not sure why, but um. I that's I was also wondering about this scene too. I'm like, <laughs> he didn't say a damn thing, and for a second she was into it, but then it was more like forced upon her. And I'm yeah. like, it's not Walt, um, but is it just crime in general? Because he saw a dead body, and uh, is that what got him off, or what's going on? I, yeah, I don't know. The, the the dangerous it seems dangerous, to. Yeah. Uh, to unlock something in him. Um, but yeah, it's not the only time we saw avocado in the, in the episode. Uh, Jesse, when he buys the gun is eating chips and guac. So very, that's that we'll talk about that for flaws. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think, yeah. I, I think we're both going the same place for that. But we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, did, did you have anything for pink man? I had the, it's the Walter thing, but, uh, but you're, it, it comes across kind of, borderline yeah it's kind of force upon it's yeah she said no mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah but avocado mass i like i like that choice the best new face it's another hard one to put down here i said the kid with the car <laughs> the kid with it i just put him there but uh yeah there's this another this is a tough one because there's not a ton of new faces here yeah maybe one there's of those those agents that would move the body or whatever yeah, there it, it, it really there's two new faces, and you said one of them, but the other one is my favorite. It is the rowdy prisoner. Oh, hey, where's yeah. my phone call? Ow! Ow. <laughs> That's my favorite moment of the episode. <laughs> That's good. Okay, 
Okay. It, it, I like that one. Shows, that's that's the win. It, it's 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 Hank at his best too. It's, Hank, shut up. <laughs> Uh, minor character, favorite minor character of the episode. I went with Walter Jr. He's only in that one moment where he's just walking by and he sees the avocado mask on the fridge door. He's like, he's a little... "What?" Like the look on his face is just pure confusion, and it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, My favorite minor character wasn't even in the episode. It's Dave. He's really good. He's really good. I almost wrote that down, too. I almost wrote that down. He's really good. He's really good. He's just really good. Yeah, yeah. He's just really good. All right. This this might be one of the more competitive awards. The cow house dumbest thing said. Mm. Go ahead. Well, I've got two down. Uh, The... uh, one is what you referenced at, at the at the open is uh we're gonna we're gonna kill him with rice and beans. <laughs> no. I like that one. That, rice and beans. Like that is that that's the Walt exasperated moment. Because he looks and is like no, no. Ricin made from beans. <laughs> that's why I was like I was like only thinking like I kinda said it the way like uh the guy the brother and there's something about Mary. Frank and beans. <laughs> so, Frank and beans. <laughs> my baseball. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Uh, I, I have Hank's uh, phrase down. Uh, do I need like a second hole in my ass? <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> and the look on Skyler's face at that point is, yeah, you just Hank that up. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, bud. What's the, the other one, one I, you got? The other one I'd written down was, it's a barrel. It rolls. Dude, that scene, that's that's an underrated scene of the episode, <laughs> so too. Good. It's, it's a good scene. Uh, uh, so, hey, man, can you help oh, move, can you help you know move old Stumpy there? Or not. They don't know their new stuff. Their stuff. Okay. Uh, did you ever think about stealing a cart? Um, <laughs> a hand truck? Yeah. <laughs> a hand truck? Uh, <laughs> I mean, just put it down. It, it It's round. <laughs> I, I, that was actually low key a really great oh, scene there. Him and Gomi. Um, my other dumbest thing said was, "Oh, how can you help this guy move old Stumpy over here or whatever?" Old Stumpy. Old Stumpy. Yeah, I that was know. a good one too. That was a good one. Old Stumpy. That was a good one too. Or <laughs> do do the mouth or do the Walt or Heisenberg? You're smart. Do something. Dude. Do the thing. <laughs> It's yeah, like, he's like they don't teach that anymore. Put your breath in his mouth or whatever it was. It was <sighs> disturbing. What? <laughs> yeah, I always said it. Breathe into his mouth. That's what it was. Breathe into his mouth. Like, he, he got well, uh, he then he pulled Jesse over there too to do it. Mm-hmm. It's great. Uh, all right. Uh, problems and outdated stuff. Landlines, phones, yeah, because they, clearly they have cell phones, but landlines are still a thing. Mm-hmm. And this is like early, early Siri, because that phone was really far away from her, and she's like, "Call Skylar." Oh yeah, and she had to walk back over there and hang it up instead of in call. That's yeah, it's a very interesting one. But also, could be dumbest thing said is, oh, she didn't pick up the phone? Did, she, did you hear her respond at all, Hank? Did you hear her respond at all? No. Put your foot in your mouth. Yeah, you already... <laughs> I, to Hank's defense, I can imagine there are several conversations Marie has with people where no one else talks. Oh, okay. Okay. With that said, I applaud you. Good job. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a great point. All right, so so the outdated thing I had was uh, crappy flip phone cameras. Oh, okay, yeah, that's another thing. Because he, he takes a picture of Gonzo and sends it to uh, to Walt and Jesse. But okay, but here here's a flaw. Here's a flaw. You ready for this? You ready for this? Because I had flip phones for quite a while. Yep. And the here's and a chocolate. flaw. Yep. Yep. Here is a flaw. You couldn't. Be on the phone 
and text a picture at the same time oh, it yeah. used the same that used the same data stream data. so he couldn't be on the phone and send the picture he would have had to hang up let them get the picture and then call back call back exactly you remember this right yeah, I do. I remember this because I was going to bring up something very similar. That was like an almost instantaneous like text message picture, right? I have an iPhone. It's not the newest iPhone. It's like the last year's model or whatever. But at the same time, is doesn't send photos instantly when I'm on the phone with my wife. I was like, hey, I got, look at this where I'm at right here. I like the picture of the mountain or whatever. It doesn't send it quite frequently. Like I was like, hold on, I'm in a bad spot. Let me uh, hang up and you get the phone and, it go, and then it goes. Yep. It's not instant like that. Uh, convenient for the show. It's television magic, folks. Yep. Yep. But hey. So the other problem, I think we 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 mentioned something earlier. I think we got to pay this off. So uh, Jesse's buying a gun. He's at a place called the Dog House. Which I thought was a perfect segue because Walt's in the Dog House with Skylar. That's that's true. Is that a place called the Dog House? You would expect that'd be like a, like a hot dog stand. It's Taco Bar, apparently. He, apparently, it's Taco Bar called the Dog House. Where he's eating chips and guac at the Dog House. What? I yeah, mean, I maybe can... that's a local, maybe that's an, a new local joint by UNM that we don't know about. So yeah, I could almost get away with like doing pretzel bites and like cheese sauce, maybe at a hot dog place. But the chips and That's chips and guac, I mean, is kind of a stretch. I could see New Mexico everywhere having chips and salsa, chips and guac because it's New Mexico. But come on, come on. That's kind of a weird one. On. Here's the biggest flaw, though. How come if Walt was so paranoid that Tuco might be in the house where Skylar was taking a bath, how come he doesn't lock the door? He walks in and doesn't lock the door. And why was the door open to begin with? It wasn't locked when, uh, at all either. Granted, it might be New Mexico where the crime rate is not that high. Mm -hmm. But you have a drug dealer who might not be in the house or may be outside the house. You would want the door, your your place locked down, wouldn't you? He didn't lock the door. Good point. Well, he was hope. I think the hope was he got there early enough that he was able to to catch it before anything happened. Because he was going to try and get them out of there. He didn't lock the door. He didn't lock the door. That is a good point. Okay, he's, and then he's we, new to this life of crime thing. This is true. When we also, I have another one. Um, we mentioned like Hank's references, like what would they be today if they was the show was made? He mentions Jay Leno. That's Jimmy Fallon or Conan or Brian, right? Yeah, probably Fallon. Conan is kind of like a little before Fallon, but yeah. Well, and Conan doesn't even have a show anymore, so oh, that's true. Yeah, Fallon but... or or maybe maybe Kimmel. Kim, mm. hey, someone yeah, Kimmel. you know what? You know, Hank looks like a Kimmel fan. Yeah, I think he, he would be a, more like a Kimmel. I think so. He probably watched the the Man Show or something like that. Oh, he <laughs> totally watched the Man Show. He, he is one that was like, oh, hey, Jimmy Kimmel has a show. I remember when he hosted the Man Show with Adam Carolla. You remember Carolla. Listens to Carolla? He probably listened to the Carolla podcast and everything. Yeah. He also hosted Win Ben Stein's Money. Oh, when Ben Stein's money, dude, that that's what a throwback. I remember that oh. show. Yeah, dude, that's those, great. those are those are some Hank classics. He's totally a kid. Probably guy. on Pluto TV. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, midlife crisis moment. Got a couple for this one too. We mentioned the guac mask. The face masks are just, just delightful at times. You know, you need a good face mask every once in a while. <laughs> Um, oh, that's good. That's good. He he has the two different phone cell phones as well, like like that's a real thing. Like the two different cell phones, like this is the work phone and this is the the personal phone. That's a real dilemma to go in. Uh, but I think the one I'm going to go with here is lukewarm water heaters. Got a water heater, just a little bit older, not putting out the heat that you want, not to put out the water pressure that you want. Uh, yeah, I think uh, lukewarm water heaters is what I'll say here. Doesn't bother you enough to actually fix it, but yeah, that's the it thing. Gives you something to complain about. That is, that's that's then that's the, <laughs> that's the midlife moment right there. Exactly. Is that, exactly. It's an issue, but I got all these other issues that I want to. I was complain about this one. That's okay. 
my my midlife crisis moment is bending over backwards for the other people around you while no one notices what you're going through. Mm. Like Skylar mm-hmm. having that moment where it's like, oh no, we gotta we gotta support her. It's like, oh really, we have to support her. Yeah, that yeah, not not me. There's nothing nothing going on with me but uh, okay we'll make we'll make sure to bend over backwards so everyone is so happy i'm gonna do 10 times the work as anybody else just because yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel that i feel that it's a good one actually that's a very underrated one there Uh, yeah i can definitely i i could see that that's a good that's a good call I kind of feel unappreciated too. That's a good one. Or just just the the idea that I have to do everything mm. because because no one else can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> uh, it, it's it, part of that is just you know complete arrogance of you know if I want if you want it done right. You do, do it yourself. yourself. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's my way or the wrong way, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's all there is to it. You described that situation wrong. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> LVP of the episode. I wrote something down here, but then I was sitting here thinking of something. It actually expands to not just one character, but three different characters. My LVP is hiding spots. Okay. <laughs> Gonzo hid the body under a car. Kind of an obvious spot, on, on it, honestly. He probably was better off throwing it in the trunk or something like that. So he had a bad hiding spot. But Walt, his money hiding spot, I've always said is in a bad spot. In that big, the big giant air vent. And then he picks it out and puts it in the, his pampers, essentially, his box. Which is not, with the lid open, another bad spot. In the middle of the floor. In the middle of the floor, which... We'll talk about that and what my theory on that is in a second. Um, and then we got Aaron, uh, Aaron uh, Jesse, horrible hiding spot of your gun, just in the drawer the kit, with your like spatulas and everything. And then also he hides his money in a duffel bag in, with in, in, next to his pots and pans. So hiding spots are pretty LVP in this episode. That is a good call. I like it. That's good. It's good. Uh, my LVP is Jesse's car. Oh, because that's, my that's, word, that's you can one. it you can hear that thing coming from a mile away with all the creaking and garbage that's going have on in ever, that thing. Have you ever driven next to a car that sounds like that? Yeah, that, that happened to me a couple of days ago. I, I thought my truck was breaking down because my check engine light came on a little before that. <laughs> on my Your check truck. engine line came on. Out of sympathy for the car you were driving. Dude, next to. Like, what the heck is like, that? And that car. Yeah is a piece of crap. Go check his engine. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's just like a big, and I, I'm just sitting there like, just like driving. I'm like just staring at the car next to him. I was like, I was like, dang, that truck, oh, hopefully you can make it to work <laughs> or, or the body shop. It sounded horrible. When it's so loud that you have to stop and go, wait, is that me? I was like, yeah, I turn, you, you need to do the, the whole, this is the midlife crisis moment. Turn your radio off to make sure like, you know, listen, like, shut, shut. I gotta listen to the car. Gotta listen uh-huh. to the car real quick. Okay, I don't hear anything. I'm, you can talk now. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna break a little bit. See if anything changes. Yeah. No, no, it's the car. Okay, it's the car next. It's to the me. car next to me. Yeah. That's, all right. My, I my dad used to go about your business. The, <laughs> dad used to do that move all the time. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. MVP. My MVP is Skyler. I think Skyler nails it in this episode. She yeah, is. That's a good uh, call. She she's the one. I mean, she almost in like I said, first season she almost felt cartoonish at times, and this one she's really like you you sympathize for her for like the first time, um, and the way the way she goes off on Hank, it that's that's like that's MVP moment material right there. Yeah, I had her down as well. Um, uh, I'm going to go with Walt's math skills because that was some quick maths. We've mentioned it several times here. How I was able to like plus subtract. Uh, 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 yeah. Multiply. Yeah. There's a little bit of everything going on there. Mm-hmm. Big numbers. Uh, I would have need 
calculator. <laughs> um, just get that those numbers. Be a little, yeah, but that, he just said off the top of his head, that's really cool. Uh, Tuco also could be an honorary MVP because he did have a plan um, in place, and they also didn't. You know, I think Walt and you know Walt said, you know, the guy does. He has multiple people watching him. So he probably has multiple people working for him and to try to build up this paranoia with our two lead characters. And then he ends up pulling the oldest trick in the book because they're so paranoid. That's why I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. So Tuco could be in the running for this conversation, too. He is such a random wild card to throw into this. Like, you don't know what to expect from him at any point. Like, you, you know he's got to be smart because he's gotten to where he is. But mm -hmm. at the same time... Uh, yeah, it's just, he's insane. So, yeah. oh, I just found another dumbest thing said, uh, when they're trying to decide what to do and Jesse grabs his gun and he's like, we, we should, we should get one for you too. Doesn't, doesn't that like double our chances, you know, like mathematically. <laughs> That's a pepper gas moment. Like, <sighs> A good a one. Better idea. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was great. That was a great one. Uh, it's great stuff. Oh, it is good great stuff. stuff. Okay. So, uh, before we get into what you think is going to happen next, uh, our uh, our Walter White body count has not changed. It uh, nothing. He was not the cause of anything. Anything's death this episode. So it remains a true two drug dealers one car one custodian's career one drug dealer's hideout and one lock and the the jesse ass kick count remains at two however i thought about like giving it like a tenth of a point because he did get pushed tuco down does yeah thing. tuco does throw him on the ground on the way so out the that, was, that was probably an lvp moment like Jet, that was not a hard enough push i don't think whatever pause for he felt dramatically yeah maybe had did some yeah. acting in his high school days okay all right we're gonna get into what we're thinking about what's gonna happen next and here we go that go ass kick count is gonna be up to three for jesse he's gonna get his ass kicked by tuco in the next episode but walt's gonna somehow get him out of it i don't know how it's gonna happen if it or even it will happen but i just feel like jesse is due for an ass kicking that probably gonna last more than one episode uh skylar because she's on a roll right now she's gonna find the money and the gun in the that uh that box that was clearly in the room and uh, she's going to also admire an ex-lover in a photo again we didn't even mention that by the way but we didn't but we that could have been a stick man but uh of the episode but yeah that some that's going to have to be come up at one point except why would they show that if it wasn't important um i honestly didn't remember that scene mm-hmm like this so is the first time I've noticed like that. that scene. Yeah. Yeah. It goes by, it goes by fast. It goes by fast. It's also kind of random because she isn't she, she's looking at a box of photos. I'm assuming that box was in the baby's room, but why was a box of photos in the baby's room, which proves that the, the whites do not have a garage. Cause we haven't seen, we have, we seen a garage door now, but have we actually seen their garage? We have not seen their garage. That's a good point. It's a good oh, point. A, it's a random spot. My my thought with the pictures, it I mean, it's been a while since they've had a baby in the house. Yeah, so my guess is that room minutes. was just kind of a, a random collect all room. And so she's going through the closets, clearing them out for the baby stuff, but finds an old box it. of pictures. They painted the room. Wouldn't you want to paint the closet to the same color? So wouldn't you move yeah. this stuff already out? Could be. It's logistic. On the house, you, don't, you don't go into the closet to paint. Yeah. Easily well, that's white. true. Let's just keep it white. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a good. It's a, it's an interesting one. I, I think they would. They showed it for a reason, and don't think it's going to get answered now. It's going to be like a similar situation with the lady who was um, in season one, who we saw at the beginning, and they're talking about with Walt and back at like a flashback scene with Walt and they're talking about oh, with Gretchen. Yeah. Gretchen. Yeah. It's, I forgot it's drew the space blank on her name, but it's probably going to be something like that. It's going to be probably 
an episode heck maybe even an, a season before we get that who knows but it's in, to me interesting but that's where i'm thinking we're heading um and yeah i, I i'm ex, i'm kind of ex, i'm excited to see what um what, what tuco does cuz he could be like just this using this this gestapo tactics or he could be a uh, <laughs> or he could just be trying to, trying to do intimidation with him. But uh, I'm really excited to see what happens next week. We're actually talking about this. We're actually talking about we it. We're actually talking about this because double tactics. Uh, yeah, that that some good stuff. I, I like where you're thinking. I like where okay. you're thinking. I didn't, I didn't completely make myself look like a fool this time. Todd will tell no. me later. No, you're doing you're doing good. You're doing good. I mean, it it's so unpredictable at this point. And this is true. Honestly, this is where it hits a point that it's really hard to stop after one episode. Oh yeah, it's, it's the second episode, like the title. I was like, it was it was like loading. I was like, nope, got to back it up. Circle, circle, circle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got 15 minutes before I have to be on camera, and no, I can't, I can't start it right now. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh. Uh... This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. I love Tuco. Tuco's amazing. Well, Terry, I really feel like this episode was really tight, 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 tight. It's good. It's good. But yeah, tune in next week, guys. A little sexy. Breaking down. A little bit. A little bit. A little sex in it. Uh, breaking, ba- there was a little sex in this episode, kind of. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> a bit, just a tiny bit. This is a little taste. Uh, next week, guys, Breaking Bad will the sideshow. We'll be back next week with episode two of season two. Break really down, excited for that bad. Really excited for that episode. So stay tuned. Sit and spin.